Hello and welcome to this Getting Started with Grid3 webinar. My name is Kerry, I'm the AAC Implementation Manager for Smartbox and I'm going to spend about half an hour taking you through the software um, and let's have a look at how to get started with it and some of the features in it that are going to be useful to you supporting your AAC learning. So for those of you that are new to Grid3, it is a platform that's suitable for everybody. Um, it's got everything you need in one place, so it's got content for all ages and abilities. It supports a wide range of access methods from eye gaze um, to head mouse to switches. Um, it supports all popular speech engines and, and you can use a range of popular symbol sets in there. Um, it's got IR and radio control built in. It also supports progress between vocabularies, so it grows with the learner. And it's a constantly evolving platform. So we do regular updates to Grid3, which bring you new features, uh, fix bugs, etc. When we talk about Grid3, you'll um, <coughs> recognise that there's different areas of Grid3, and the users that you're working with may fall into um, one or several categories in how they're using the software. Um, the first area is text communication. Uh, we have symbol communication computer control, environment control, so where people are doing things like um, uh, turning the lights on and off, um, controlling their televisions, um, accessible apps, so people that want to do things like email, um, Skype, for example, interactive learning, so a way to motivate some of our learners, um, and using it for educational purposes. I'm going to take you across into the software now. We'll set it up. Um, and then we'll go through and take a look at some grid sets and learn about basic editing. Okay, so what you can see in front of you is the welcome screen in grid three. When you open it up for the first time, this is where we'll land. So I'm gonna go ahead and select get started and I'm gonna follow the wizard that should help me um, set up the software. So the first thing I need to do is make a user. So I'm going to call this user Kerry. You can see here on the right hand side, I've got the option to change the voice. So I'm going to select change to look at the voices that are in there. And we'll scroll down through the list. You can see there's a range of voices. And I'm going to select Rosie for the child voice and OK. If I want to, I can add a picture for my profile. Um, you notice on the voice side, I can also do things like vary the speed and the pitch if I want to at this point. Importantly, I've also set up the language that my user is going to be in. So here I'm using English UK. Um, elsewhere, you can see there's a range of different languages that you can access Grid3 in. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to select Next. Here I've got the opportunity to set up my Smartbox account. So a Smartbox account is really important, especially if you're using multiple devices. It allows you to sync that user across different devices. Um, I'm not going to set it up at this moment in time. I'm going to change the option on the left, bottom left here to skip it. Um, but it's definitely uh, recommended that you set up a Smartbox account. It also helps with um, backing up all of your grid set and your user information. Here I can see it's asking me what grid sets I would like to add into the software. Um, the default here is that all of them are set to yes, um, but just to show you how you can easily turn them on and off, for example, if I select not to add in text communication and we'll turn off environment control and computer control for now. If I go to next, when I get into grid three, I'll see that it's only selected the grid sets that I've chosen for my user. Privacy information here, again, the defaults are set to yes. You can change those now or you can change them at a later date. This just means that um, the privacy information does things like learn predictions, it records chat history and it uses the location with a view to helping um, provide the best and most up-to-date um, predictions um, and information for our users. However, from a privacy point of view, if you want to switch them off, then you can do so. So I'm going to select create user in the bottom right hand side. And 
and I can see it's now added the user Kevin. So we're going to open up that user again, selecting the button on the bottom right hand side. So what I can see in front of me are all the grid sets that I asked Grid3 to add in. So I've got my symbol communication grid sets here, um, I've got my interactive learning grid sets, and then um, you can see that I can scroll through the different pages um, to be able to look at um, everything that I've got. This area here is called Grid Explorer, and Grid Explorer is like your landing page where it will store all of the grid sets that are in your user. If I wanted to at any point add any more grid sets, I can simply go to the menu bar at the top and select add. That will bring up um, a smaller window. The add grid set allows me to go into the different categories in grid three. Um, I can create a new grid set or I can go into online grids. Online grids is our user community, which has a range of grid sets from Smartbox and users all around the world that can upload and share grid sets. Uh, we'll go into text communication because we didn't add any of those previously. I select that, I can see it gives me a list of the text communication grid sets that are available. We'll add Fast Talker 3 and go to Next. And it gives me a bit of information about the grid set tells me what symbols would be available with it, tells me that it's text communication, that it supports computer control, and tells me who's made it. So I can see that this is a smart box grid set. I can add that. I can see that now in Grid Explorer, I've got Fast Talker 3. Okay, I'm going to close this window. The other thing to be aware of with your um, Grid Explorer is that you can organize it. So if you're like me and you like to have everything in folders, I can go to the menu bar and go to Arrange. And here I've got the option now to create a folder. So I'm going to call this Symbol AAC. And then if I go back to the screen before me, I'm going to take some of my grid sets across and drop them into my folder. So we'll just take a couple. So it's quite easy to arrange grid sets according to um, how you want them set up in Grid Explorer. I just finish arranging and now I'm back on to the Grid Explorer screen. Okay. So what we're going to do really quickly is have a look at um, one of our symbol grid sets. We'll have a look at one of our text grid sets and then we'll have a go at some editing. So I'm going to start with Supercore. So those of you who aren't aware, Supercore um, is a core-based grid set, which means it uses core words. Now, core words make up roughly 80% of the language that we use. Um, what you can see on the screen in front of you is the words in the yellow, the green, the blue, and the grey are what we call core words. So they're commonly used. Um, words that aren't core words are known as fringe vocabulary. So Supercore has been out since January this year. The idea behind Supercore is that you build most of your message on this top grid. And then on the right hand side, we've got some dynamic columns where we can go out to find additional words to complete our sentences. The bar across the top here, the lilac colored words are predicted next words. So as you type a sentence, it will predict um, an appropriate next word for you. This is there to obviously help speed up um, communication and message creation. So if we try to build something here, we'll have the word I. I like this. You can see um, the predicted net wor next word cells changed. And as I selected a word, it went up into the chat and writing area at the top. Um, and then if I select the chat and writing area, it will speak it. So really, really quick way of accessing language. So I clear that out. OK. Um, the language is obviously organized into different word groups. So from the left, we've got our people words in yellow, which are our pronouns. Our verbs and action words are in green. 
um, are describing words um, are in blue and our smaller words are in grey. You'll notice that some of the words don't have symbols on like a, b and and for example and that's because the words themselves are so small that quite often it's easier for um, the user to learn the actual grapheme, the, the look of the word, um, rather than trying to learn quite an abstract symbol which accompanies those words. So that's also there to support literacy and learning um, to read words. If I can't find the word that I'm looking for on the top page within the, the 32 core words that are here, I can go off into um, more actions, for example. And it will move to a grid that's got a whole load more um, action words available to me and additional action categories. So now I've got thinking, everyday, doing and reading. So I'm going to go back to the main page. As I mentioned on the right hand side here, we've got what are known as dynamic columns. Um, the first two cells in the dynamic columns are where we find our context specific vocabulary. These are specifically included in Supercore because um, we know that a lot of our users starting out with Supercore um, will be learning to use AAC. And so we need to make sure that they've got language appropriate for lots of different contexts so they can practice using um, their AAC. So if we go into daily, for example, and into sleeping, what you'll notice is that all the core words on the left hand side have stayed the same and it's just the two right hand columns that are changing which means my user still has access to all of the core vocabulary but now on the right hand side I've got language that is specific to in this case sleeping and bedtime. Um, I've got individual words here and then if I go to phrases you can see that I've got a range of phrases that we could associate with bedtime as well. Now users um, starting out with Supercore may use the dynamic columns and just perhaps be at the one or two word level and they may just be using the language from the columns on the right hand side. So they might for example say choose story. Okay. As they progress what we'd expect to start to see with support and with uh, modelling and lots of um, different uh, sessions and learning time is that our user would start to say want to choose and start to build up their language combining the words with the core vocabulary with the context specific vocabulary. If I go back to the home grid, um, exactly the same when you go into play. There's a whole range of different contexts, different activities that kids will be um, interested in and using and coming across every day as play-based activities. Um, and it gives them the language that they can use to engage in that activity and to take control of that activity. I'm going to go back home. There's also um, in the dynamic columns a whole load of um, other words which we can use to support um, communication. So if we go into topics, for example, you can see here uh, lots and lots of different topics about all sorts of different things. If we go into transport, for example, there I've got a wide range of um, transport nouns that I can look at and use as part of my language. You'll notice um, it's generally organised from the left to the right uh, in most commonly used words. So if we're thinking about some of our younger users, um, car, train, plane, bus, for example, are all going to be words that they're using quite a lot, which is why they come up first in the list. And then as you get towards the end, we've got um, items that are less um, commonly used. And that's the same for all of the topics. Um, if I go into messages, this grid works slightly differently. Here we have a range of preset messages in different categories. You can see the categories down the bottom. If I go into me, for example, so I select that cell, it will open up the whole of the me category and I've now got a lot of things that I can say about me. You'll notice there's a lot of blanks in this message section and that is because we expect it to be personalised for the user. So we've given a few sort of suggestions of what things you might want to put in this section, like my birthday, where you live, uh, what you need to do if a user's upset. 
but we've mainly left them blank so that they can be personalised for the individual user. And that's the same with all of these different messaging types. Again, because Supercore is specifically focused on users who might be new or developing their AAC, in the bottom right hand side you can see that we've got a spelling grid. The spelling grid um, has phonetics, uh, phonetic sounds behind it, recorded. Um, I can build words, I can just play with sounds, and again, it's all to support the user with their AAC and literacy for relevant activities. Okay, so that's a really quick tour of Supercore. I definitely recommend really that you download the grid set and have a look around it, and there's lots of resources as well on the Smartbox website if you want to know more. To get back to Grid Explorer, which as I said before is our landing page, I'm going to select the menu bar from the top and if you look on the right hand side you can see that it says Grid Explorer. If I select that it will take me back now to Grid Explorer where I can see all of my grid set menus. Let's just have a really quick look at Fast Talker 3. So Fast Talker 3 is um, our main text communication um, grid set in Grid 3, it also includes accessible apps. Um, so we have a text talker as well, which supports text communication, but that doesn't have accessible apps. So I'm going to go through Fast Talker and give you an idea of the capabilities within Grid 3. So in terms of um, straight communication, we've got a chat grid, which takes me to a QWERTY keyboard. Um, I can start to build my message. And what you'll see is you've got word prediction here. Again, that's there to make my um, uh, communication much quicker. Um, so that's how the chat works. It's got access to tools. You can look at chat history. Um, you can ask it to speak. Um, but there's lots of different um, uh, ways to speed up uh, communication. So in Fast Talker 3, we've also got a separate messages section. And if I go here, you can see I've now got some preset messages. The idea behind this, again, is about fast and efficient communication to allow the user to communicate um, quickly and more effectively with their communication partner. Here, I've also got the option on the bottom right-hand side to add a phrase and to remove a phrase. So I can start to personalise uh, Fast Talker 3 with my own um, phrases that I use quite often when I'm out and about when I'm in conversation or things about personal care or lots of different different um, situations. Okay. Um, the other thing in Fast Talker 3 is message banking. Now message banking is obviously a fantastic feature for recording your own messages and having them all saved within the software. Um, down the bottom here you've got the option to record a new message. Hello there. And then we'll go to next. You can see I've got the cell to start and stop recording. Hello there. And then when I've done that, it plays it back to me. I can save and finish or I can record a new phrase. So I can record a series of messages um, at one time. And after I've recorded that, they are saved for me in the software uh, and I can use them again and again. A really um, important feature for a lot of our users. If you want to know more about message banking, there is information on our website. So some of the accessible apps that are available um, in Fast Talker 3, I'm not going to go through all of them because of the time. I definitely recommend that you spend some time having a proper look. Um, we've got things like social media, um, email, for example. Down here, you've got things like phone um, and SMS, which is really important um, communication for our users. If I just dip into the social media, we could go into Facebook. Okay. So what I've got here is um, an accessible app to allow me to access Facebook. So I would log into my Facebook account and then here you can see I can go to the home page, I can use Facebook Messenger, I've got the option to navigate around the page, to comment um, on a post, um, and lots of different options to like, 
um, and moves through different stories. Um, a really nice way to access social media from within Glimpsery. I'm going to go back and I'll go to the email, for example. Again, we have a number of users, lots and lots of users who um, use email within Glimpsery. Um, here, you can set up an email. Um, you can option to reply to emails. Um, you can open an email, save attachments from within here, um, and do everything that you would need to do within your email account and, and stay within the grid three context, which means if you need support with navigation, um, you can do that all within grid three. Let's just go across and look at the other things here. Um, lots of nice options in here. I can do music and video, for example. I can go out and um, search the web. Um, a nice one is the camera option. If I go into camera, I can choose to take a photo and then I can choose my photos to look at. So here's one that was taken in a training session um, a while ago. Lots of nice features in there, again, to personalise it and to give you access to be able to take a photo um, and then send it to someone, store it on your device. Um, let's just click. There's other bits here. So notes, for example, allows the user to be able to take notes, um, do some uh, very basic um, there you go, documents in there. You can edit them. You can add new documents. You can send the document as an email. And then other features like a calculator, for example, um, is always really useful. So Fast Talker 3 is uh, text communication, but it also has a lot more in it. It allows our users to do more, um, to be able to do things like take photographs, to send emails, to send SMS messages. Um, Fast Talker 3, um, if you have got a user in Grid 3, that wants to be able to do all of that is definitely worth exploring. There's loads more information about Fast Talker 3, setting up contacts, setting up your email, um, all available on the Smartbox website. If we had time today, I'd go through it in a lot of detail. Okay, I'm going to go back to Grid Explorer. And what we're going to do is have a quick look at some basic editing in Grid 3. To do that, um, we're going to actually add a new grid set um, just so we can really focus on what we're doing. So I'm going to go to menu and to add. And I'm going to select new from the left hand side here. I'm going to give it a name. So we're going to call it, um, I'll call it weather forecast for now, just so we've got it. And you can see here that it's got um, grid size. I can change the grid size. If I want to add a picture, I can do. I can change the colour of the background of my grid. Um, I'll go in screen and then press OK. You can see that's appeared straight away in Grid Explorer. So I'm going to press, click on that and go into the grid set. Now when I go in, because it's a blank grid set, um, you get a message that says, this grid's nothing in it, why not edit and create some sets? So that's exactly what we're going to do. So if I go into the menu at the top, I'm going to select edit. This takes the grid from user mode into edit mode. So I'm now behind the scenes in my grid. I can see all of my cells on here and then my different editing options in the editing bar across the top. So we'll start by selecting a cell. And when I click on this cell here, you can see on the left hand side, I've got the option to create a cell. So that's what we'll do. I'll select, select create cell and it brings up the create cell window. There are lots and lots of different commands, we call them, in grid 3, which allows um, grids to jump, grids to speak, um, grids to take photos, um, all sorts of things. Um, and again, I would recommend that you spend some time getting to know all of the features in grid 3. For now, we're just going to look at making um, a right cell which is in one of the favourites here. So we'll select right and hit OK. And you can see that the cursor is flashing in the middle of my cell. So I'm going to type in the word more. I can see that it populates it with a symbol for me. But also if we look across the top, I can see that I've got um, different symbols available um, for me to choose from. 
So I can choose one of these or I could go out to find picture which will open up the picture search. Now here I can look through all of the words for more in my different symbol sets um, and on the left hand side you can see that if I don't want to use a symbol for that I can choose a picture file, I can search from the web, I can actually take a picture and put it straight into that cell or I can screen capture from something else that's open on my computer. We're going to stick with symbols for now but it's just really worth knowing that those options are available. Um, we'll go for that symbol I think and then press OK. So let's make um, a few more cells. So we'll do another one. So I'm going to select create cell. I'm going to have a right cell and we're going to put the word stop in here. I'm happy with that symbol so I'll leave it. We'll just do a couple more um, and then we'll think of some games we might play. So we'll do create cell. I'm happy with the right cell. bubbles and we'll do one more create cell we're going to stick with the right cell and we're going to have cars oops just something to note on the right cell if you look on the left hand side whenever you've got a cell selected this is where you'll see your list of commands. So for example, under cars, um, we could go to add. And we're going to go here and we're going to type in play sound. So I'm going to want that cell to say the word cars, but I also want it to play a sound. So if I select browse, so this is what my command is going to be doing. Transport, road transport, and I can select a car. Okay, so it just allows you to be able to add lists of commands to a cell for it to do multiple things when it's selected. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Put it in finish editing and select yes. cars with the car sound in the background. I'll just go back into edit mode really quickly. What I hope you can see there is how quick it is to just add vocabulary into Win3. Uh, one thing you might want to do straight away is be able to change the look of a cell. That's really important, particularly if you want to distinguish between different types of words, for example. To do that, what you're going to use is the style tab at the top. So I've selected my cell here. Um, it's a vocab cell. I can choose um, to do different things to it, so I could make it a different shape. I could change the fill, for example. Um, so we'll go for a blue colour. And I might not want it to have a border on it, so we'll go for no border. Okay. Um, I can change the font on there, the font size. So we're going to make uh, perhaps make the font size a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, bubbles, however, I might want to be, it's an activity, so I might want that to be a different colour. So I'm going to select my fill. Uh, we'll go for a nice green here. Um, I don't want it to have a border on it, but I do want to have um, a big font. So we'll go for 24 here. So you can see how quick it is to change the styles. Um, if I wanted to, I could select update style, which means every cell that uses that style would update to the new look. Um, the other thing you can do with cells once they're here is if you decide you want them in a different position, you can just click and drag them elsewhere on the screen. Okay. There's lots and lots I could show you in editing with Win3. That's some real basics to get you started.
Um, we've done it in a new grid set. If I wanted to do that in Supercore or I wanted to make changes in Fast Talking 3, I could do that in any of the grid sets that we've got. I'm just going to go back to Grid Explorer and save my changes. Okay. The last thing we're going to do then in this session is have a really quick look at settings. I'm not going to go through all of the settings for you, but what I am going to do is make you aware of um, what settings um, are where. To get to the settings menu, I'm going to go to the menu bar and select settings. Okay, <clears throat> here I can see this is my user profile. That gives me all the information about my user. And one thing that might be worth looking at is the startup. So when Grid3 starts up, where do I want it to go? I've got at the moment the default, which is to start in Grid Explorer. You might want it to specifically start in a certain grid set, so in the user's AAC grid set, for example. If I go into Access, this is where I'm going to go and set up um, my eye gaze, for example, or my switches. Um, if I'm going to use voice activation um, or different pointers, this is where I would go and do it. So if I go into eye gaze, just to show you, um, it will go through the different settings for eye gaze. So um, looking at the camera, for example, I've obviously not got one connected, but you can, it should pick it up, but you can check which camera you want. Do things like setting up the calibration um, and all different settings in pointer. It's exactly the same. I'm going to select uh, how we're going to activate it, how we're going to activate the pointer, um, what kind of highlighting that I might want. How we're going to, if we're using it for computer control, do we want it to zoom to click? Um, do we want to be able to press the switch to activate it, for example? Um, get to know the, the access settings that are in Grid 3 so that you can really personalise it and make it really efficient for your individual user. Speech settings are obviously where we're going to do go for everything to do with voices. Um, I can change my speaking voice. Um, I can change my audio feedback voice. Also, things like uh, message banking you can set up from within, within here as well. So we did do a bit of it in Fast Talking 3. You can do it through settings. Um, and then pronunciation is where um, if there's a word that um, Grid 3 can't pronounce, you can tell it how to pronounce that word. You've got your writing options here. Things like chat history settings you can set up in here. Um, the use how you want the symbols to work. Um, small words, for example, any abbreviations that you might want to set up. So when a user starts to type um, the first three letters of a certain word, it's going to pick up that abbreviation and expand it to the whole word. Accounts. So this is where you're going to go to make sure you've got your Smartbox account set up. Um, email set up. So in Fast Talker 3, I can set my email up and then that would uh, be available through Fast Talker 3. Um, a Dropbox account and also down the bottom here, remote editing. So if you're not aware, remote editing means that um, I would be able to log into someone else's user in Grid 3 and make changes to their grid set. And I don't actually have to be in the room with that user's computer. Um, the user has to grant you permission to be a remote editor, so not anybody can log in. But this is where you would go to set up your remote editing um, within uh, Grid 3. And it's really important. It's a fantastic feature, um, but it does mean that you have to set that up. So you have to give somebody permission to do that before you can set it up. Again, contacts, I can add multiple contacts in here, which would be supported um, in various grid sets. Importantly, if you've got users um, that are accessing the web, um, perhaps some of our younger users who might be accessing the web, things here like filters for blocked or allowed websites, um, setting up browser favorites, um, mobile sites, for example choosing your home page and um, the default obviously here is thinksmartbox.com but if you want a different home page that's where you'd go to change it and then here you've got settings for um, things around the computer um, so important things like the device does it have a rear facing camera um, how do you want it to take photos where do you want the sort of um, default printer to be um, 
what do you want to do sort of on the startup show the menu bar do you want to hide the menu bar from Gumtree and um, basic setup that you need to um, look at something that's really useful is down the bottom here you've got the opportunity to turn early access to updates on or off this means that when we release an update and uh, we do an early access version which comes out um, a little bit before and it gives you the opportunity to try out some of our new features um, before it's an official release so if you turn that on you'll have automatic access to those and it will just show up um, in grid 3 and tell you that there's an update available obviously phone settings would go here I don't have a phone set up at the moment but this is where you could go and set it up again environment control um, I go and set up uh, the transmitters and the codes here and then this gives me all the information I need about my licenses okay settings is definitely something that I would recommend you spend some time going through and just becoming familiar with what's in there what changes you can make um, and how you can make AAC more efficient for the individual user the other thing to draw attention to in the menu bar on the top right hand side is our help so if you are in grid three um, and you're getting a bit stuck, you can access our knowledge base here. Um, if somebody asks you, for example, for um, what version of grid three you're using, you can do that through here. So that was a real sort of whistle stop tour um, of grid three. I hope you found that really useful. I hope it's been helpful to help you get started. If you have got any questions, then absolutely don't hesitate to contact um, our support team. So I'll just give you some information there. We've got um, support at thinksmartbox.com is where you can go to get in touch with people. And also, um, if you want to know more about Grid3, you can access that via our website. Okay. Any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I hope you found that useful um, and have fun getting to know Grid 3.